Welcome back to the Cinema Cult Network. I'm Chris. I'm Matt. And I'm Honto. And we are wrapping up our Vinegar Syndrome halfway to Halloween month with The Laughing Dead from 1989. This was Honto's pick. Honto, tell us why you picked this. Matt and I watched it. I think we've talked about it on the podcast. We watched it back in like October and it was something else. This is yeah. like a blind watch, right? Yeah, we actually, me and you, Chris, we compiled a list of horror movies to watch uh, as a group whenever we're looking for something awful to watch. <laughs> this was on the list. That's right. That's right. Exactly. I do remember this. There's a lot of Maybe. movies on the list. And this, yeah. Uh, well, actually, and then cut back to Matt. We were trying to watch something uh, that was available. And this is after we went through a, a, a few on the list is the first, like the the one that we found. Okay. Yeah, I was going to say, we found a, I think it was a VHS copy of it on YouTube. Was yes, the one, it was like very, the first time we watched very it. Very VHS. It was rough. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we'll do what we do at the top of the hour of the show, like we always do. And that is what's the budget of this movie? I do not have those numbers. They don't exist. What do we think it is? <laughs> That's a, well, there's no answer for that. <laughs> so what do you think it has on Rotten Tomatoes? There's no score, so I can't give you that. Really? So it has no Rotten Tomatoes score. How but about, you wanna, how about like an IMDb score? Or something? Well, I got the audience score for Rotten Tomatoes. How about a letterbox score? A letterbox. So, what do you think the audience score is for Laughing Dead? What is this a percentage or? Yeah, what is this out of stars or? No percentage. Like, like I, I, you got the, the critics review and then you get the audience score on Rotten Tomatoes. Say five percent. Okay, Matt. Out of a hundred and twenty percent. Out of yeah, hundred. Is that what we're doing? Are we doing five percent out of? Okay. Uh, I'm gonna what go. What are you talking about? <laughs> four stars. Out uh, of ten stars. So on Rotten 40%, Tomatoes, 40%? out of a hundred percent, it has four out of ten stars. That's a forty percent. Wait, Rotten I'll, Tomatoes, what do you think the percentage is for the audience score? Um, percent. 35%. It has a 0% on Rotten Tomatoes. It only has three three okay. reviews, and those reviews are not favorable. Everybody really did not like this movie based on all those reviews. But I did pull up the Letterboxd one. Okay, yeah, Letterboxd has a higher score. I was actually score. about to pull it up in case you like okay, it. Okay. What over. do you think it is out of five? I know what for it is. For people who, this obscure app that nobody one, knows, one, except for the two people in this room. One, oh, point, no, people, this is like the most popular app. Uh, 1.5. Matt? I know what it is. Okay, what do you think? It's a three out of five. It is a three out of five. Wow. Yeah. Right? So, wow. Yeah. Oh. So. And that's yep. that, that's the audience score. All right. So for Laughing Dead, since I had no information, uh, we'll play a few guessing games. How long do you think this movie was? Matt, go ahead. What? Oh my yeah, God. Just trivia questions. What do you got? Two Hon- hours. Okay. Honto. Um, hour and 15 minutes. Hour and 32. Honto wins by default. Wow. Wait, wait, how much? Oh, my God. And so I know I didn't understand the question. <laughs> it's too late. I didn't understand the question. <laughs> You're too tense. Relax. <laughs> um, and I hate that we have no like um, money comparison on here because I yeah. love talking money. Yeah. So, so I think another just asking bullshit I picked, questions. I picked another movie that had dead in the title. And that movie was Shaun of the Dead. How much do you think it cost to make Shaun of the Dead? What? Uh, 15 million. Matt. 15 million. 6.1 million. Okay. Oh, wow. And how much do you think it grossed worldwide, Matt? 75 million. Honto. 80 million. 30 million. Oh. That's so not- I did some extra work just to fill in for the work I didn't have. So yeah. Honto, take us away with the cast and crew of oh, Laughing Dead. Oh, boy. Laughing Dead, 1989, directed by Somtal Such Eric Cool. Okay. I'm trying my best. You were. You were trying. Uh, he is not only the director, but he's also the writer, the producer, the composer and the main villain of this movie. That's all, pretty impressive. We, got, that's, we, got, we, got, we have our first all in one package right here. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. Actually. Um, not really a lot of stuff on his uh, filmography. Uh, he directed some B movie ill bet ill met by midnight, which I think is supposed to be like a um, midsummer's night stream. Is that the, the Shakespeare? Yeah. Yeah. It's like a retelling, okay. but I think like yeah. a horror movie. Uh, and then he also directed this movie called the my or I think he started in this movie called the maestro where he's also the main villain. I think he also directed it. So it's like okay. another package deal. That's cool. That's cool. Uh, I saw that he wrote an episode of Chippendale Chippendale's Rescue Rangers. Nice. Uh, and then he also wrote Creature of the Deep, which is directed by our patron saint, Brian Usna. All right. Interesting. OK, so he's uh, kind of dabbled all over the place. Okay. Hey, don't, no spoilers. But the cast and crew on this, do we know any of these people? Uh, no. Okay. All right, go ahead. <laughs> I don't know any of them. All right, good. Tim Sullivan, Tim, Tim Sullivan, sorry, 
as Father O'Sullivan. <laughs> okay. okay. Reunites with the director in Ill Met by Midnight. And then he's also in a movie called The Mark of Dracula, which I misread as Mark of Dracula. Mark, Mark, <laughs> Mark, 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 Mark the Dra- yeah, Mark, Mark, Mark Dracula. Mark Dracula. Yeah, Mark Dracula. Sorry, Mark Dracula. And it's just a guy like on there. It's like not scary. <laughs> it's about a guy losing his family. It's, it's, not, a, it's not a horror movie <laughs> yeah. whatsoever. It's kind of a coming of age uh, tale. <laughs> you guys know my cousin. <laughs> uh, Wendy Webb as Sister Tessie. It's the um, kind of like the love interest, I guess, of the father. Of okay. Father of Sullivan. Okay. Uh, you'd be surprised to find out that this is her only role. I don't know if you could tell by her acting throughout this entire movie. Okay. Where she just didn't seem like she gave a shit. You know, it's weird. When I imagine her, I think of the mom from Troll 2. Nope. You know what I'm talking about? Ka- kind of. Remember the mom from Troll 2? Yeah. Right? Yeah. I don't know why I envision her as that role. I feel like they're similar. I need to I watch Troll 2 again. I only saw it one time. I only saw it really one time. I, I was... watched it like two years ago and it held up. Really? So I'd Early... like to watch it. That'd be a has good any, podcast. Has any label put it out? Like a Blu-ray label? I, I think can't... so. I think so. I, I mean, I actually have, but I can't think yeah. of at the top of my head. Like they put out like a yeah. really good version of it. Or Yeah. Uh, that should be some Chris can do some research on that yeah uh, Hanzo, please continue. but yeah I would love to watch Troll 2 for the podcast because I haven't seen it since like early Netflix yeah that's uh, been, I feel like I was the DVD in the mail days that's like the cult cult era is I mean that's a cult classic isn't yeah it? yeah it's cult classic uh, actually I did not see a boutique blu-ray release on this I think it's just a uh, just a regular just a standalone it came out in 2010 for the 20th anniversary they actually had that entertaining um documentary, documentary. it's yeah. solid yeah that would be a good that would be a good vinegar syndrome title yeah hey, oh yeah. if you're listening right. to us <laughs> do it <laughs> um I mean a lot of people now this is like their only role like Patrick Roscoe Roscowick is the kid Ivan this is the old yeah. movie I think he killed it He's great. He's pretty good. He's pretty good. Had a lot of uh, one good one-liners. If if you had to pick out a standout actor or actress in a movie, who would it be? Probably the kid. I so mean, I'm gonna go with the I, father. I, I think say, the father gave like a hundred percent. Like the of the priest or the whatever. Priest, yeah. I mean, he was definitely sleepwalking in some of those scenes. Really? Oh, I thought he was like. He's like, oh god, totally put it in there. Like, like who's? Uh, to me, basically, your question is who's giving a hundred percent? Yeah. Uh, the kid. I would say the kid. Or, or I, no, yeah, no, 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 actually, no, I'm sorry. It's the director, producer, writer. Oh yeah, that's okay. And this is who's yeah. giving? Who's second in giving a hundred percent? The kid. The kid. I would go with the kid. Really? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, right. Because there's scenes where Father Sullivan's like, "Well, my uh, lost my faith in humanity. Uh, uh, um, there's something weird going on here." Is this movie? Here's is, here's my fire f- signs. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> here's my first question. For the evening, except that the wife survived, I guess. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, is this movie supposed to be a comedy? I don't think so. I don't or think is it this is. movie supposed to be a horror? I think it's supposed to be pure be, horror. Yeah. Because there I are this things is like, that are intentionally like intent or uh, uh, that are intentionally funny. Yeah. In it, right? Intentionally or intent? There's intentionally funny. Intentionally funny or unintentionally. Intentionally, yeah, in, to do it. yeah, yeah. So I, I said it yeah. right the right yeah, yeah, way. Yeah. yeah, intentionally funny. Yeah. Okay. I'm just trying to flub you up. Yeah, that's what I was like. Poor Chris. Oh, words. <laughs> uh, and then there's stuff that's like this is unintentionally funny. Yeah, I.e., yeah. the basketball game at the end. Oh of the yeah, movie. or like the basketball or the head falling through the basketball hoop. I felt like that was supposed to be kind of yeah serious, serious. serious but the like basketball game, I think is supposed to be kind of humorous. I do think that's when he's killing all the kids and he's like taking their hearts and he's like, oh, that's this is hard funny. work. That's supposed to be funny. Yeah. I don't think it was. I think it's supposed to be funny. Really? I think it was. I don't know. But it's, I feel like this is like, I mean, this is like a this has to be a passion project. I think this is the first I can see of that. his yeah. movies, basically. Yeah. yeah. I feel like it's a Tommy Wiseau situation of like really just giving his all. Sure. And just yeah. all these people I can totally to, see that. Yeah. To, to be aboard it. Yeah. You know? Uh, we got Premika Eaton as Lori. It's the girl that is with the um, that shows up and has the father in the hospital, or whatever. Okay, yeah. Uh, we were we were questioning what her role was in this movie, yes. or you know, the actress, sister of the director. Oh, oh really? Oh. Okay. So there we go. Interesting. All right. Uh, and then we have Matt Demerit as Harlan. I think it's the curly haired guy that gets his head cut off. Okay, and it goes in the basketball hoop. The only thing I recognized was Cyborg 2, uh, sequel to the first Cyborg with JCVD. Okay. Just a shit B movie, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, Ryan Effer as Cal. It's the like the archaeologist guy that teams up with the girl 
And he like okay, he comes that, in like halfway through, kind of. He says that spell and turns into the uh, Kuko Khan or whatever, the, like yeah. the, the Cardasaur. Yeah, uh, not. I think this is his only movie, but he's art department for previous episodes. She's all that. She's he was also art department for a movie called Bad Dreams, which I've seen the VHS cover for everywhere. It's like an eighties, okay, like horror movie. Yeah, and then this other movie that I've heard of called Never Too Young to Die, I think, or okay. Never Too Young. Yeah, I think it was Never Too Young to Die. Starring John Stamos. I brought this up on the podcast. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, I, th- I can't remember what what movie we were talking about, but uh, I, I saw the sequel. I didn't see that one. I saw the sequel, The, the, too, the too Old to Live. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but this movie is basically like a James Bond-esque guy played by George Lazenby uh, that gets killed and his son, who's like John Stamos, becomes the super spy and he's fighting against... Uh, uh, you made us watch this movie, and it starred uh, Richard Grieco. Oh no, this is another version, basically. I know, it yeah. sounds like, but yeah, yeah, yeah basically the same yeah. plot. And then, um, uh, what's his name from Kiss? Gene Simmons. Oh, is, yeah, she uh, yes, I remember we talked about this. Yeah. This sounds like the Richard Grieco yeah. because Roger Daltrey from The Who is the villain. It sounds oh, like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, Somebody had dueling son. projects. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. This is the um, the burning and then Madman, like the, yeah, volcano uh, and volcano Dante's Dante's Peak. Peak. Yeah, exactly. Um, Bad Dream sounds familiar. It does. I'm sure if you guys see the cover of it, you'll be like, okay, I've seen, okay. seen it around. Yeah. Uh, and then the last person I'll mention is Len Wine as Corpse Number Three, most famous for co-creating DC Comics Swamp Thing and Marvel Comics Wolverine and helping revive the Marvel superhero team, the X Men. Oh. He's the co-creator of Nightcrawler, Storm, Colossus, and he was the editor for Alan Moore and Dave Gibbons, uh, Dave Gibbons miniseries Watchmen. I didn't know that. That's Cor- very interesting. Cor- as Corpse Number Three. Uh, here's another casting for you as Corpse Number One. Oh wow! Did I miss this? Yes, Forrest J. Who? Ackerman. Okay, I, I think I saw him, but I wasn't sure. Yeah, you know who Forrest J. Ackerman is. Tell me. Uh, you know the um um. Monster magazines, like famous monsters of Filmland magazines. I think so. Yeah. You, you ever seen with like the Basil Gogo's artwork, and it's like Dracula and the I Wolf did. Man. Kind of, kind of. Uh, they're like in Salem's Lot. I think the kid in the in the movie has a bunch of them. Okay. And he collects them. Okay. Uh, but it's a you've seen his magazine. I have a, a bunch of issues, but okay. it's famous monsters of Filmland. Uh, that's Forrest J. Ackerman's magazine. Okay. And. Uh, I, could, I could, yes, I, I have an idea. Yeah, yeah like the Acker Mansion and stuff like that, okay. and um, uh, you. I don't know if you'd recognize him, but like he's in a couple Landis movies. Oh, cool. Okay, uh, somebody saw the face. Well, yeah, he's just kind of a. That's cool. Supposed to be a really cool guy. That's and really random. That ran a, yeah, yeah. He ran a ma- ran the. Yeah, uh, I wonder if it was like something like to do with the direct, like having some sort of connection with the director. Or, I don't know or what, but I mean, he's in. He might have uh, just asked him to do it, and he's like, sure. He's uh, un- uncredited in Beverly Hills Cop 2. He's in Dead Alive. Um, yeah, look up uh, the magazine. You've seen covers for this. Chris, like, you'll, have to do it. you'll have to do that for yeah. me. That's fine. Well, actually, to go back. Okay, so what did this movie have to do with Bad or bad Dreams? Um, one of the actors I listed was in. in okay, it. so Bad Dreams is a movie me and Matt just watched. That's oh. what I thought. That's oh. what I thought. I okay. know you're talking. Okay. It's the girl from um, Nightmare on Elm Street 3, the one with the... Uh, the, the knives. The, uh, um, oh. the Mohawk. Oh, okay. And she is in an asylum with Dean... Matt, help me Stockwell? out. Stockwell? No, Dean uh, from um, Summer School. Uh, Chainsaw. Cameron? Oh, Dean Cameron. Dean Cameron, yeah. And then he's in it, and it's like they're all get, like, getting picked off in this... Uh, we brought yeah. this up for yeah. summer school, I think. We talked yeah. about Dean Cameron. It was a decent flick. It's a good, it's a, it's a good watch. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, I was going to say, uh, but, uh, the magazine covers, like, you would you know the magazine Oh, as well. you mean Disney Adventures? <laughs> yeah, Disney Adventures. <laughs> Highlights magazine. Highlights. <laughs> what was the magazine called? Famous Monsters of Film. Oh, okay. I know what it is. I know exactly what it yeah. is. Yes. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. That's yeah. his magazine. Okay. but right. Very cool. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. That's all I have for cast and crew. All right. So as we discuss this movie, we're going to do it in three parts because there's the first part where it's the road trip. Yeah. You have the like, second part. Yeah. Yeah. You have the second part where they're at the hotel and weird things are happening. And you have like the third shorter act where they're, in they're the, like in like the pit and like things yeah. are really going bonkers. It's a good way to break it down. Thank you. So <laughs> the first. Okay. So basically, I don't even know what this movie is really about because it's about like, what are they even trying to do? No, no, it's like a vol. It's like a um, like a volunteer trip to like an archaeology dig. Yes. I think it is. Um, and it's led by this priest, 
who we later find out is in love with this woman who they had a child and they both had a child together. Yeah, it was a total like forbidden love. Yeah. And then she was a nun. Yeah, she was a nun because they showed yeah. in the um the confession booth. Oh, that's right. That's yeah, right. That's yeah, that's like the dream sequence that he has. Yeah. And it turns out they've birthed a really horrible child. Yeah. yeah. Named Ivan. Yeah. <laughs> Ivan um, the Terrible. <laughs> yeah, it's it's pretty rough. Um, so they get you have all these like random people on this bus are going to this trip. And I think the first like strange occurrence is when don't they see like a body in the road? There's uh I think the uh, yeah, it was a little girl that was killed. Yeah. She sacrificed in the beginning of this movie. Yes, thank it's you. It's like literally the opening credits, I yeah. think. Yeah. She gets sacrificed and then they find her body in the middle of the road later on. And then there's the two acolytes that are like dancing or doing a ritual in the in the road, and then the body just kind of gets up and leaves. Yeah. But then that's like the end of it. Yeah. Really just kind of like honestly, just something superstitious and mysterious to yeah. throw in the first act. But this but is actually because um, nothing happens. I would say the the only actually really kind of gory scare that we get, or I guess scared in quotations. You were scared. I was scared. <laughs> the second time seeing it, and I was scared. Uh, I think um, Father O'Sullivan okay. or the 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 girl Tessie, the 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 lover, or whatever. Yeah, has like a nightmare where they're giving birth. Oh yes. Oh and yes. Then it's like oh no, we got to do a C section, and then like oh, the yeah. the kid with like monster teeth like her mama yeah ah. it should have like cursing and stuff as yeah you know, this is fucking dealing. bullshit <laughs> her like, mom yeah it's just the kids like i don't i don't know why they i guess i don't know it's confusing it's very confusing <laughs> it's uh very confusing it's it's well it's, i want to say confusing it's random yeah we're like okay maybe this because is the, character traits the kid is the kid's just, a piece of shit like yeah, i guess because he doesn't have a father figure do you think this is intentional to make it funny how much he's cursing that's what i mean is it is like is it i can't tell if it's like this is supposed to be funny or like i'm trying to show you how bad this kid is because he doesn't have a father yeah because ha- like 90 percent of the stuff that the kid says is like it's uh, just a curse word yeah it's a curse word and it's hysterical yeah uh, in every sense, and he always says. refers to the main character as a man in a skirt, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, that's literally like I'm not joking. Yep, that's the first 40 minutes. I don't think I've oh. ever gone that fast through an act in a movie. But what do you got, Matt? I was gonna say it ends uh, with The Exorcist. What do you mean? There's that exorcism. Oh, when he actually like yeah, gets where that's where our kind of our our first act kind of ends is. Uh, uh, oh, I see where you're saying. Yeah, yes. they get to the uh, like the basically the town yeah. or whatever. Well, yeah, I feel like once it gets to the town. Oh, you're, oh yeah, yeah. Act. I forgot you broke it down that way. Yeah, yeah. and then once they get to the town, there's like hey, these people come. Like, there's an exorcism. You got to take care of it. And I think this is the the first part in the movie where you're like, like other than the dream sequence, you're yeah. like, okay, this is gonna be a bonkers movie. Yeah. Um, because he the priest goes but, to perform this exorcist. Did you have yeah, something? Oh, I was gonna say. But yeah, it's kind of just like you don't know where it's going because it's like 40 minutes of this movie. It's just them on the bus. Yes. Which is what yeah. we kind of talked about in the last like episode where we're talking about this movie or whatever. But yeah, they arrived at this like town that is having like the Festival of the Laughing Dead. I guess it's like a I don't know if it's a real it's thing. It's Day of the Dead. Or they I remember I think I remember reading it was inspired by Day of the okay, Dead. Okay, because there's a lot of Day of the Dead stuff. But going they do on, call like the it like the, they do and... call it like the Laughing Dead. Yes, basically. but it was inspired by yeah. that, yeah. But yeah, but basically, it's just a lot of them just kind of like going about their business around town, like chatting, chatting yeah. up with people in the village or whatever. Yeah. And like you meet Cal, the archaeologist who shows up yeah, halfway through the movie. He says something like he was trying to meet somebody here for a dig, but then just kind of integrates himself into the group. For some he reason. totally does. Yeah, he just becomes. Yeah, part no one of the asks group. who he is. Yeah, he just says, yeah. hey, may I, may I have a seat? And then he's just part of the ride. Yeah, yeah, that's about it. But yeah, then we have him basically going to the exorcism, exorcism. and that's where and it's bonkers because um, she like reveals herself topless. Yeah. And then she reaches in and grabs her own heart. Yeah. And then reaches in and grabs the father's heart mm-hmm. switches them, drops them both on the ground, then tries to figure out which one was which. But she's like kicking around. She has no idea. Yeah. They both like, look like, identical. And there's yeah. dirt all over it. And, uh, and he's yeah. like, he's a band aid. Like, ugh. <laughs> then he's like helping her and it just gets complicated. It's, yeah, it's awkward. <laughs> Let me help. <laughs> this looks great. By yeah, the this way, this looks solid, doesn't it? Yeah. The, it's I, will pretty give, legit. I will give this movie props for having uh, great special effects. Yeah. And some of the stuff is kind of goofy at times, 
And there's times when they're in the, the cave set and oh, the cave can't, is awful. But people like, can't help bounce off the walls <laughs> and you're like and they, they you just see the foam on the walls yeah, go or like or, sliding in the construction papers like moving around yeah. and wobbling. But it's like outside of that, like this scene with her yeah, ripping her heart out, good. opening her like her her chest it's and legit. then ripping her heart out. It's pretty yeah. awesome. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, it looks and great. They kind of establish at this point that the father is going to be kind of possessed, or at this point, yeah, kind of. Yeah. They don't really s- explain what's going on. Yeah, it's here. very back and forth with the possession. Yeah. It's like they, it's like they use it just to get out of scenes. Well, I guess they, and it, then they don't really kind of. Yeah, they, they do it as a way to like turn the like have I guess moments where the main characters like it's it's a total like oh it's a my faith is you know lost like you know I'm I'm talking like I'm now my faith is tossed you know <laughs> lost or whatever he's like I don't know what I'm gonna do it's like the the evil is taking over me yeah type deal yeah but it doesn't really make sense it doesn't really go into it more in depth I feel like and it should have because it's supposed to be like a big scene yeah because like not to jump forward to the end I don't even know what lesson he learns at the end I don't either I, I do want to talk about that as well because I have it's questions like, about he doesn't it. really refine his faith at the end of the movie and it's like well I say he definitely uh I mean like I don't know what how it works with the like Catholicism or whatever Christianity but he definitely like becomes a father of this kid yeah, so, so oh, I sure. almost feel like by the end of the movie, based on all the stuff he just saw in the catacombs and the monsters and everything like it's that, a very like he probably, he probably fully lost his faith. Where he's like, "Well, this stuff is very real," <laughs> like, <laughs> you know what I mean? And like he never uses his own religion to conquer. That's a very good point. Like, you religion. think that would be like a, a yeah. big thing? Where yeah, that's a very this, good point. Like would probably be like. I'm saying from my perspective, yeah, I, was, I totally agree. I agree. Like if I was yeah. in a situation, I'd probably be like, this would be a sealed deal for me that like, well, these monsters are real. And like, like, it's like signs where it's like, okay, I'm seeing proof of this. My heart, my heart's back in a place where it used to be. Yeah. Like, yeah, but that oh, never, I wasn't even talking about like in his, like his religion. I'd just yeah. be talking about like, whatever he's seeing, he's seeing like demons oh, and about, monsters. I, about his fate, I feel like this would sh- like fate. completely shake him off of his religion and be like, yeah, I don't know what the hell I saw down there, but it wasn't in the book. And he, literally, down, and like, he literally had like a vice versa uh, heart swap with the yeah, woman. So I'm like, like father, like son. Exactly. Yeah. So literally after this happens, the next half an hour or so is just random events happening in the town. Um, yeah, I can't remember the bit. I think the big one that happens after the the heart swap. I think it's like it shows this the the curly haired guy, which I think his name is. I can't remember. It's like I mentioned him in the um, the two buddies. Yeah, the two buddies. It's Frost and I can't remember the other guy's yeah. name, but he's like the the crass, like saying inappropriate jokes on the bus and stuff. And then there's a part he's like, "Hey, look at these Cinderita's headlights." And oh like, yeah, on TV. Oh, come on, man. Yeah. And then um, yeah, somebody opens the door walks in and he's like it's a and it's like a sleepboy cam it's like oh nobody's gonna believe that you're here and then yeah. he gets his head chopped off who kills him yeah it's the priest. oh it's a priest it's definitely the priest because it's like you should yeah, it shows him with like the all black and like i think the short sleeve shirt or whatever oh really yeah it's like i think it's pretty obvious it's supposed to be the oh priest. i didn't catch that yeah. i didn't catch yeah. that either yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I got it the second time around <laughs> <laughs> um but then um, again like why did he kill him I just I think, at this point I, somebody just had to yeah, die. I think we're looking for somebody who who's got to go, and it's like it's the loud yeah. mouth, you know, potty it's mouth. It's random, guy. right? Because like he just kills this 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 one off guy that has really nothing to do with the story, and uh, what, no, what is the plot of this movie? Because there's, no, there's literally no character development for yeah. The only character development that it, there is is for I would say the 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 father. Yeah, this is the sister, the father, the um, like the priest, the sister, and then the kid. That's kind of like their, their yeah, di- you know, dynamic. And then I would say second most important is the girl in the beginning with her father, with her father. Yeah, uh, and, and then it's not brought it. up again until the end, until yeah. the end when you're like, wow, that might be extremely racist. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, but like this guy dying, like it would make sense if he was like murking everybody out, like yeah, off one by from one, the, or one something. by one. But no, he yeah. just kills this one off guy, and yeah. Then, yeah, he like punches his head off. He right? slices it. He does he a slice? um like a T one thousand. Like that's what arm, I thought. Yeah, arm knife yeah. slices it, and his head like. Well, it's funny because before this, the uh, I think the the mom is like telling the kid to go play basketball with the priest because the apparently the priest is like known for playing basketball. Yeah. 
And so he's like telling the kid, like, I'll go meet you out there. And so the kid's like practicing, practicing hoops. And then the head falls in the, into the basketball. And he has like the loudest and most high pitched scream. Oh, dude. Dead. Yeah. Uh, like he's giving it a hundred percent. That's what I'm saying. He's like, yeah. he might be the second most next to the, uh, next to the director. And I think this is when it kind of goes bonkers, I think, because the cops show up. Yeah. They oh, my interview God. everybody. And then is this when the bus gets moved? It yes. absolutely is. Oh, man, this is like this we were, the best part we of the We were around it like three times. Because yeah. the, um, the, um, the girls talking, or there's a, there's a cop that's boarding up the, the, uh, the gate to prevent yeah. them from leaving. Yeah. Even though I'm pretty sure that like the entire side of the town is open, they could just go around it. <laughs> But like, well, they can because at one point they uh, he chases a little boy. The priest chases a little boy like right after this. That sounds the town. Was it Spotlight now? Were you switching to Spotlight? <laughs> the movie? The movie Spotlight? What? <laughs> You're talking about- <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, but yeah, they no, can totally you know I mean? no, get like, out of. Yeah, there's a scene that, like that's not too far off from this bus scene where the kid escapes into the crowd of the Day of the Dead. Oh, and the priest is like chasing him through it. So, yeah, yeah they could get out. They just want to take the bus. Yeah. yeah, that's totally what's yeah. going on. But yeah, she's like going up to the, I think it's the um, the other girl. Yeah. Like the yeah. sister of the director or whatever. She taps on the shoulder of the, the guard or whatever, and it turns out to be a skeleton. Yeah, he's like a zombie. Or a zombie, zombie. okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then he kind of collapsed. But then like they go to talk to the other cops, and it's just the two acolytes. They're like the two guys that just it's show It's the bus up. driver goes to confront him because the bus driver's like, he's oh, like, that's he's right. like, hey, man, he's like, what are you doing? It's just Otto from Simpsons. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then they turn around and then he plays like a little magic flute. It's like, Wee! and then just like this weird ring of light strangles him or something. Yeah. And then he falls to the ground. The bus starts to move, runs over his head. And then as soon as it runs <laughs> over his head, there's a guy that happens to be in the way of the bus moving, but he clearly has plenty of time to move. And it cuts back to the guy whose head was crushed. Yeah. And it cuts back to the guy who's about to be hit by the bus and he's like fully holding on to it. <laughs> yeah. Aiming for the wall. It was like, it's the best part. But of the it's movie. like going five miles per hour. So it's like, he's just waiting to get crushed. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's phenomenal. But I would say this is like probably the second goriest scene, right? Because it shows the guy getting crushed and it comes oh, back to the head yeah. of the, uh, the bus driver. And it's like eyes out. And his eye, eyeball like flops out basically. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It like falls out. Yeah. It's very, really uh, crazy. it's pretty gory. Um, but yeah, this is like chaos ensues. And I think I'll jump to the part where like the big fight in the hotel. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think they're like at this point, they're trying to figure out how to get out. And then I think the uh, the girl with the crystals. Yeah. Yeah. It's like arguing with the, yeah. the desk clerk. And I love it because like at this moment, I could tell Chris wasn't into the movie as much. And then the bus, the bus scene happened. He's like, all right, this is pretty funny. <laughs> I think that's and about then, where we were, too. And yeah. then right when he got to this like fight scene in the lobby. This is where I think oh, Chris was heard, on board. Where he's full, like, full yeah, Chris laughing. Where he's like, what the hell? <laughs> Dude, like, it was so good. Because you had like, who who's killing everybody at this point? Is it the priest It's again? the priest again. He, yeah. like, yeah. he turns because I think it's like, it's like a total like his back is turned. And then when they tap his shoulder, it's like. Yeah, Vigo. Yeah. Vigo uh, yeah. Ray moment. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, he ends up like ripping someone's heart out, right? Doesn't he put a hand through somebody's he chest? He punches the desk clerk's face in. Yeah, oh, yeah he does head, do that. Yeah. Fist through the head, basically. Yeah. Which is like. The camera's like behind the head and it shows the fist going through and everything. Which and then, makes no sense because right after he gets done killing the, the desk clerk, he punches another person in the face and they just fly, fly to the ground. Yeah, which I think is the, the archaeologist guy, the cowl guy. Yeah. Or so but like then, this uh, all looks so good though. Everything looks awesome. Even the part the where the two guys pick up that tiny coffee table and they slam it. Yeah. It's hysterical. <laughs> it's a table that easily was like a one person. Well, deal. and at one point he rips a guy's arm off, which is the, the roommate or the friend, the of roommate the guy, of the guy yeah. who, who's headless. Yeah. Uh, in the, in the, uh, about 20 minutes ago in the movie. And he shoves the guy's arm down <laughs> his throat. But his fingers are still moving, even though he ripped his arm it off. It looks he, so good, and though. And his fingers yeah. are moving in his throat. Yeah. It's, it looks good. It's just it's, it's awesome. It doesn't make any sense, but it's great. But once again, is it like is this supposed to be funny? Like I know, I know. Yeah. Right? It's so good, though. Um, but I think this is like the point where they go to the cave, right? I mean, this yeah, is yeah. So I guess, like, I guess, yeah. So I guess what happens is the priest is doing is like he's about to wreck more havoc, or whatever, and then yeah. they do some sort of spell. And he goes flying through the wall, like the construction paper wall. And then like reverses. It like, reverses, and comes back together, and they have to do like a um they have to do a total like Beetlejuice of like um 
the hand guide to the recently deceased yeah. and like make that door move in the yeah. wall. I was about to say that. Nice. Yeah. Were you really? Yeah, I was. I was about to describe the scene that way. It's just a Beetlejuice yeah. moment yeah. where like draw a door here. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. yeah. And then the door opens. They're in this cave of like some Mayan temple or something. And then, uh, well, it's supposed to be, but it's actually just a, uh, a set with construction paper. Do you remember yes. the week we watched this was like the same week we watched City of the Living Dead? Oh, yeah, yeah, And they dude. both have the same ending. They where do. Where like wow. they go into the catacombs under the ground and there's like the dead walking around. And The only difference is like... Magic, I think mag- same thing with like City of the Living Dead, like magic beats it. And Yeah, the, the only difference with uh, City of the Living Dead though is like it literally is just them walking around playing the same song over and over again. Do, for, do, yeah. Do, do, do. For, yeah, that's exactly yeah. it for like 30 minutes and i remember really if i saw it i remember it but uh it's that's a gross movie first it's off. nasty but oh, is that the one with the okay where she pukes her yes. guts out yeah. Yeah. Uh, no she pukes her is it her guts or her brains out it's her guts i think okay yeah but it comes back later on okay in the movie because that's like the uh the the killer priest in it so yeah. another killer priest ironically right wow uh i think he's a priest right and i think it is yeah. living dead um, his like finishing move is making people do that. <laughs> so it's like kind of just it gets to a point in the movie where like the That's main girl rough. is he's like trying to kill her that way. And yeah. you're like, oh my god, you're like it's gonna happen, and yeah. it's like more he's intense because you already saw again. it happen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I would watch that movie again. I'm not a huge Fulci fan. I need to watch my own movie. that Fulci uh, vinyl trilogy of oh, like, yeah. oh yeah, the yeah. dead, and, the dead um, trilogy, or whatever. I've only, I think I've only watched one of them, so I need to okay. still watch uh, is it Cemetery House by the House, Cemetery. I like, House, Cemetery. I like House by the Cemetery. The Beyond, the it's Beyond, is super Living depressing. Dead. Living Dead, super depressing. Yeah, House uh, by the Cemetery, but the soundtrack rules. Yes, yeah, I think a lot. I think, the, I think the Beyond's seen. legit. I don't think is I ever that watched. The one it. We watch? Uh, we didn't watch it. You and me watched City of Living oh, Dead. Oh right, okay. And then you and me separately have watched uh house by the cemetery yeah i've seen it and i think times. chris you've watched house by the cemetery because i think we all three talked about I it know the point. ending i don't think i've seen the full thing though. okay that needs depressing but like the soundtrack is like top tier yeah yeah that's like yeah. one of my favorites mm-hmm. that is a good one uh um, yeah that's it I, i'm kind of bummed that you have that because i would totally buy it now because all three of those soundtracks are pretty legit really yeah yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, I, was, I said yeah, like I haven't heard it. Yes, all three soundtracks are dope. Yeah, but it was kind of a bummer because when I first bought that uh, box set, um, I didn't know it was like thirty three RPM, or oh. I didn't know it was forty five, so it's playing at thirty three. I was like, this is a very slow burner, like creepy yeah. one. And I was like, this is cool, and then I saw it, and it was like, nice. and it was like, oh, it's a little faster. Yeah, it's like the, the montage of Bill Ted's where they're vacuuming. <laughs> I would love to do a month on the podcast, Italian Maestro Month. Let's just do those three movies. Do a Fulci movie, an Argento movie, and I'd love to do a Mario Baba movie. Oh, wow. I don't know if I'd want to do an Argento. Really? Yeah, I don't think I'm a fan. Why would you do opera? I haven't seen opera is yeah, opera's cool. Was, Wait, is deep, cool. deep red full ch- or uh, Argento, Argento. Yeah. You said that's the good that's, one. That's my favorite. So let's do deep red. Yeah, I like deep red. One. Actually, I like uh Tenebre. Or that's Tenebrae. Actually, that's solid. Actually, Tenebrae is good. I yeah. do like yeah. Tenebrae is awesome. Yeah, Suspiria is the only one that like, and I will agree with I you. Not Suspiria get is, overrated. Yeah. I don't think it's overrated for the I think the first 10 minutes are it's, awesome. It's excellent it's opening. It's a beautiful it's looking movie. Great cinematography lighting blah 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 but i but, think uh, the story, dude whatever. it peaks yeah that's the only problem with that movie it peaks it in does. that first 10 minutes yeah. and yeah. everything afterwards is just a slow burning movie of where nothing's really happening yeah. and the ending's really anticlimactic inferno is kind of that way too because inferno is weird inferno. inferno's like the first 10 minutes of suspiria spread out yeah over yeah. there's 90 a lot of minutes. cool moments in that movie oh cool. it's weird okay. though but it's right. slow because of that yeah okay. it's 90 minutes of people just like what's that noise and you just watch them explore the noise for like 20 and minutes and then they get killed and then you're like okay. and then on to the next person it's i i love the um the scores by keith emerson and the score rules oh, yeah okay. yeah but yeah mario bava movie uh, an Argento movie and a full two. What movie. Mario Bava movie would you pick? Black Sabbath. Is that the one with like the witch with the? It's the anthology one with Boris Karloff. Oh, and okay. There's a vampire story, a ghost story, and a killer story. So I would say it. lace if we're gonna do a, like a Mario oh, Bava. Oh yeah, Blood and Black Lace would be yeah. really cool. I take it back. Blood and Black Lace would I'm be a, really cool. I'm a noob when it comes to Mario Bava. I think I've only yeah. seen a uh, Bay of Blood. Okay, okay, Bay of Blood's a good one as well yeah. too, to talk that, about. It has a lot of a uh, good like. Um, like Friday the Thirteenth stole a lot of kills from this movie. Yeah. Really? Okay. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, I like Black Sabbath a lot because it's just like I think it's a really uh, 
cool movie and it moves yeah. real fast too okay. since we've fallen down a rabbit hole what's the movie at the end of the credits where it shows how they film like somebody riding on a horse black sabbath oh it is black sabbath yeah okay it's very yeah. interesting they show how they're like, like they do the horse effects on it and yeah, it's just it's really people cool. running around with with tree branches yeah. around boris karloff they're like stationary and they're just like running in from the camera yeah it's, it's kind of so cool. Cool. Oh, cool it's like it's like him cl- that's it's weird it's how they yeah. close the movie yeah because he's him riding on horseback on the- yeah and it's a shot of him riding on horseback as trees are passing him yeah and then the camera pulls away and it's the studio and it's just like four people running around him with tree branches and the fans That's on so cool. and yeah. they're blowing cool. leaves. And he's like, what a weird way to end. Yeah, he's on like a fake horse. Cause isn't he talking? Yeah. And he's like talking. It's cause he's like the person who narrates the movie yeah, okay. and, uh, opens up the episodes and he's also in one of them. But, uh, um, interesting. Okay. But no, blood and black lights would be a cool one to do. Yeah. Uh, any Fulci I'd be fine with as long as it's not New York Ripper. I said we're gonna do Fulci, probably do Zombie. Fulci oh, I haven't seen Zombie forever. Yeah, I mean, I, I think you want to do like the big hitters. I, mean, I watched that um, Cat in the Brain uh, Fulci movie. I remember you, man. I told we were on I, a tangent. I you never know. watched. This is going to show how close we are to the end, but we want to spread it out. <laughs> <laughs> no, I uh, remember watching that with you. I uh, watched. We crashed. You crashed over like on Halloween night, and then I and, think yeah. we never. That was I never like when Shutter popped yeah. up for the first time too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I watched on my own in its entirety. And I effing hated it really i hate that movie it's yeah. a it's a total meta like he's playing himself in the movie uh, he's a killer. i watched because i have the soundtrack and i did like the soundtrack on her yeah they're trying to like watch everything and then yeah. post something that was like this is i think there's rough. any fault she's fine but i think any like i'm kind of down for any argento opera would be kind of cool opera's to dope do. I, I think opera's dope i think you would like opera really? Yeah, there's a lot of cool shots in that movie, okay. and it's a I really should, cool premise too. Because I don't really show uh, Italian horror and giallos to my wife as much, because I know it's like a very like it's a sort of niche it's uh, definitely, genre mean, to really enjoy. Yeah. yeah. Um. So I like I'll show her some every now and then. Uh, but I showed her opera, and she liked opera. Okay, cool. And yeah. then yeah, we've watched actually we've watched a, a few Argento movies together. So yeah, cool. I yeah. still think Tenebre might be my favorite. Out of the uh, Italian horror Keep films I've watched. Uh, yeah. Profondo Rosso, Deep Red, or yeah. Try. I think you yeah. might. I like to watch it. Yeah. it. I'm totally open. So Laughing Dead, because <laughs> um, we literally have like two scenes to talk about. Yeah. yeah. Because yeah. it is the scene where they played basketball uh-huh. yeah. in this um, um, catacombs pyramid thing, whatever. What is it exactly? I, I think it's I, supposed I, to be like the caves of an Aztec or a Mayan ruin. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, I think it's a Mayan yeah, ruin. That makes sense. I think okay. you're right. It's Mayan. So they played basketball against like zombies, like true story. What's well, like the uh, the setup here is like the doc, the doctor, the main villain of the movie yeah. is like about to sacrifice Ivan. And they don't really like clarify what the stakes are here because he's sacrificing children. They never say if it's like. Ivan's the last white boy that they need to sacrifice. They don't. They just, no, yeah. no. They never. Yeah, they never say why. That's like, what I mean. Like I don't know what they this never movie's about. Say what the I stakes are. Yeah. Is, the, is the problem. They never say like what's at stake with this. Yeah. Other than like the priest might be fighting for his life. Sure. But well, uh, okay. Uh, we forgot to say this, but uh, in the lobby scene, yeah, Ivan gets taken, and that's why they go to the underground. That's true. Like yeah. world is because they have to go get Ivan back. Yeah. I wonder what happened to the other um like the kids uh parents. Why didn't they chase after them? Right? Yeah. Yeah, because no one's around for that. Yeah, <laughs> right. There's, there's a lot of kids that there's a lot of kids and no parents. There's a whole <laughs> line of kids and no parents. <laughs> well, they found. sold them all. Oh, that's right. Remember at the opening of the movie, they were selling the kid. Yeah, he's like, and he's, oh, he makes a comment okay. when he's killing all he's the like, kids. He's like, American children don't come cheap, and it's a lot oh, of hard, yeah. a lot of hard work. And he's like killing each yeah. one. Yeah, good so catch, he, good catch. Yeah. So just so instead, you just have a bunch of uh, dickhead parents yeah. that are just selling yeah. their children. Yeah, they're it's, they're back at home counting all that cash. Yeah, yeah twenty dollars. Yeah. They're pre pre going to hostel. A right. bunch of uh, uh, dollar coins, basically, they're counting. Yeah. Like, ooh, nice. I still think one of the most disturbing scenes is in Hostel 2 when they're, like, yeah. bidding to, like, who they're going to kill. And it shows, like, all these, like, doctors and they're bidding on their phone and they're trying to, like... Yeah. Like, it's a very disturbing scene. It's a very well-done scene, but it's very disturbing. Nice. Um, but, yeah, so they play this basketball game. It's, it's weird. It's so blurry at the end because they play this basketball game. They win... And then two people turn into dinosaurs. Yeah. Like, no joke. The architect that they met halfway through the movie and then the main villain yeah. turn into carnosaurs. Uh, yeah. 
And it's actually, it looks cool. This is a fun ending. It's cool. Yeah. Cause like he's about to sacrifice the kid. Right. And he's like, he's like, you know, from like the ritual, like we can challenge, you know, it's like, it's like game of Thrones. It's like trial by combat or whatever. Yeah. yeah. It's like, morphin time. And yeah. Then they it's turn into well, yeah, yeah. It's basically like, well, we do get to play a game of basketball, right. To have our say. And they play the basketball and it's like, they're just tossing the ball. They're not really shooting it. And it all. doesn't really change anything. No. Which is really, really weird. Doesn't. Yeah. Nobody like they scores. Make this, yeah. <clears throat> nobody scores. Oh, well, yeah, they do, right? Well, they score, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Which yeah, technically yeah. doesn't count. Yeah, because. But yeah. they play this basketball game that has no effect on the actual outcome of the movie. Nope. Nope. And then the, the game's over and they're like, okay. It's like the kid throws the, the diamond. <clears throat> like, you got it. I believe in you. And he throws it in. And that's where I was like, from downtown. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And then they turn into dinosaurs, yeah. two of them. The makeup oh, here. I thought the dino I thought the diamond came off one of the dinosaurs. It did. It, it came off. Yeah, that's the, how he um, kills it. The doctor oh, the doctor okay. has that one where it's like a jewel in his yeah, he's forehead. Got, oh, so that happens after the dinosaurs yeah. fight. Oh, yeah. I see. He's got like yeah. the guyver on his forehead. Yeah, because like, I think he even very glows good. And yeah. It's like, ah. yeah. Yeah. So after the dinosaurs fight, that's what happens. The kid throws yeah. the diamond through. Because then, the, I think the priest is about he's the one that's about to throw it. And he's like, you know what, son? Here you go. Yeah, like the, it's a very like throw it, like let's go. People are dying. Just be done with the movie already. <laughs> um, um, the dinosaur stuff looks cool though. It is fun to watch. Yeah, yeah. The, um, the the transformation of the two guys into whatever the hell these things are. I think yeah. it's supposed to be like Mayan gods. It's like okay. Kukul Khan, and I can't remember what the other one is supposed to be, but they're basically like I think he calls on the power of Kukul Khan. It's like okay. Mayan god, okay. I think. Okay, and then he's like. I didn't sign up for this. I'm turning into this God basically, because <laughs> the guy who uh, turns into is the, the cow or arch- our arch- arch- um, archaeologist, the one that yeah. teams up or whatever. And then he ends up fighting the, the main villain wax his tail across his face. The diamond falls out and they shoot the basketball and then stuff starts falling apart. And, and this was all written in a script. <laughs> and I well, I think what happened is he wrote it. And since he like was the majority of like writer, producer, composer, actor, yeah. director, he was like, I get final say on everything. Probably. Yeah. Oh, Probably. yeah. Yeah, for sure. But yeah, it ends like them escaping. Um, I guess all the bad people are kind of like in the crowd of this like day of the dead. They're not really dead. Oh, yeah. I can think. Yeah, they're trying to hint at the like uh, and then the see priest, next time. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like The priest gets possessed again for a second. He's like my heart. And then like nothing happens. Yeah. And then so it's kind of like he's always going to be on their like puppet strings. Yeah. I think, I think that's what they're saying. Which is yeah. kind of a creepy Maybe ending. Yet. And then like the family like reunites for the first time in years. And then like. But then it's like they look back and it's like, look, the town it was just ruins the entire time. And and then he asks her, like, what the hell was the point of all this? <laughs> <laughs> like, why did they need all these people here? Why did they need this, this one yeah. child? How come the plan didn't complete itself? Like, what, at what point did it like did these people showing up change this guy's like master yeah. plan um because they didn't really do anything uh too extensively well, I, that I, I think we don't know that because they never explain what the stakes are in this movie yeah like what is the purpose of this movie like why is he <laughs> killing all these kids <laughs> for their hearts this? it doesn't i don't understand it uh but, but it's funny because there's like a massive like uh just massive explosion in this town it's like Yes, it's like levels, yeah. like city blocks, but yeah. like everyone's celebrating at the Laughing Dead Festival. And yeah, it's Laughing Dead Festival. Yeah, yeah. you just yeah. gotta laugh it off sometimes. And yeah, it's <laughs> and that's Laughing Dead, nineteen eighty nine, zero percent on Rotten Tomato for an audience score. Uh, I'll go ahead and start off. I'm gonna give it a, I'll give it a thirty. Uh, I think it's a fun watch. Uh, the first forty minutes were a struggle. Um, I wish the whole movie would have matched the last half of it. Um, but I do not regret watching it. I think it was fun to watch. Uh, some very memorable scenes um, for this Calvary movie. Uh, definitely, it, it's a recommended watch. Hanto? I think I'll give it a 50. Okay. It's leaning towards like, why the hell would I watch this movie? And the reason is uh, I laugh at it and it's funny. I'll watch it again probably. Yeah, you're having fun with it. Um, I, This is the second time I've seen it in less than a year. <laughs> is bonkers yeah <laughs> but i'll probably watch it again All yeah right. i okay. don't know why yeah it's just a fascinating movie yeah it's really yeah. weird the 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 uh the transfer of this was pretty good too it was pretty good i, can, I yeah. can't compare it to what you guys saw when you first watched oh, it. it was yeah, like, like it was yeah. awful yeah. no it was awful. a it was a good yeah, looking transfer better 
Yeah. yeah. Uh, that, 60%. So you like this more than all of us? Wow. Yeah. Uh, I watched this movie twice in one year. That has to be, there's and, something to be and, said about that, right? we both watched it together. We both watched it together twice in one year. Um, it is officially our number one hangout movie in like the 10 years we've known each other. Yeah, I mean, yeah. like, I'd, I'd name but, another movie we've watched more times together than this movie. <laughs> exactly. So this yeah. is our number one hangout movie of all time. Okay. In our friendship, Honto. Okay. Um, but also kudos to the special effects. The special effects are yeah, legit I, in this I, movie. I wish yeah. we, I wish we knew the budget or any little yeah. anything about it because I'd be curious to see like who they got. I actually didn't didn't think to look it up. I didn't think to look up who did the special effects or like how much it would have cost. Yeah. But um yeah yeah i think fun hangout movie yeah. uh i i recommend for uh uh a group watch yeah. don't watch us by yourself no. watch us as a group yeah watch it with people get to that first 40 minutes like they they the uh matt and Hanto warned me about that get to the first 40 minutes and it really picks up and it's right. not terrible though that first it's, 40 it's, minutes it's very okay though yeah and like i probably would have if you'd not if you'd not told me the warning of the first 40 minutes I probably would have been like, man, I you, really want to watch this. Okay. So if you didn't have to watch for the podcast, would you have shut it off after the first 40 minutes? I don't know if I didn't have your warning, maybe, but your warning was like, okay, it's going to be worth. So it. you would have, you didn't have our warning. If you were just blind watching, this, you would shut it off. after forty yeah. minutes. So okay. let's revisit the, uh, the makeup department for this movie. Go for it. Uh, the designer, uh, is by a guy named John Carl Buchler. Uh, he is best known as the supervisor for Reanimator, special effects for Hatchet, special effects for From Beyond. Uh, he directed, I think, I'm looking at it right now, directed Friday the 13th Part 7, The New Blood. Oh, cool. wow. Uh, Troll, he also directed Troll. Uh, so yeah, there's people Very cool. behind this. Rick Carter, yeah. he was a sculptor for um, Nightmare 4 and 5. Okay. So okay. there's like there's people behind here. Very cool. Yeah, yeah, Jake Jake Johnson, Nightmare Five assistant. So these people have done horror movies. Before, Very cool. Okay. Which is pretty cool. Yeah. And that's actually some good. That's hey, that's some good uh, cast and crew right there. And some trivia. And some trivia. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Matt gave it a sixty. Hanto gave it a fifty, and I give it a thirty. Uh, I think it is a recommend from all of us as far as it is a very fun watch. Uh, to wrap up our halfway to Halloween slash Vinegar Syndrome month, I would like to rank the three films we watched. That includes Girlfriend from Hell, Ticks, and Laughing Dead. Um, I will actually say in that order. I will say uh, Girlfriend from Hell was phenomenal. Uh, Ticks was pretty good. And then this was a, wa- a good watch as well. So I will is- also say that order. Wait, okay. Hanta? Uh, I'll go Girlfriend, Laughing Dead, Ticks. And then Ticks. Okay. okay. Yeah. All right. I think because I watched Ticks twice, but from Girlfriend from Hell is definitely like a more cohesive movie happening. Yeah, okay, very. Yeah. Girlfriend from Hell is like honestly was a great time watching it with you guys, and I really want to watch it again. I might because Chris purchased this copy. Uh, if Vinegar Syndrome does another sale coming up, I think I'm gonna snag a copy of Girlfriend from Hell to watch for Halloween this year. Well, what yeah. you should do is. Buy it at full price to support Vinegar Syndrome. Yeah, you, you oh. wait until it's the highest that you can pay for it. <laughs> oh, 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, no, because it's like otherwise I could. Yeah, but like, yeah, Chris, I this is one of those ones that Chris has, and I'm like, damn, I wish I had this. Yeah, that's definitely I think a good thing to have in the collection. That's yep. why I think mm-hmm. I thank you at the end of the episode for buying it because it was a good. And, and I want to thank you for thanking me. <laughs> and I would like to thank Horror Found, Horror Found for introducing us to Vinegar Syndrome. Not that we didn't know it existed, but uh, yeah! this has been a cool <laughs> month. Talking about these movies, these really good releases. And I do want to talk more about the stuff they have put out. And I'm sure we will at some point. So that's going to wrap up our Vinegar Syndrome slash Halfway to Halloween month. And we're going to follow that month up with Italian Horror um, we literally just we literally paused the episode <laughs> to figure out to figure out hey, what we're going to do next, next month. month. And, and we just we talked that about 12 minute rant of uh, Italian horror films. We're going to move forward with that. Do we have the films settled yet? No, we don't because we still need to individually pick each one. So that will be our next month coming up. Uh, if you have any requests or anything for, you know, uh, months that you want to see, or just if you want to leave us comments in general and just to reach out, you can hit us up on Facebook. You can message us on Instagram. You can email us at cinemacultpodcast at gmail.com or you can leave a message at anchor.fm or 
you could comment on some of the episodes on YouTube. That's true, because we do read those as well. And we, we do have some cool all. things coming up besides the Italian Horror Month. We're talking about doing a live episode. Um, we already got that that TikTok going, so we can maybe uh, post something on there. Yeah, we can need um, to do a we can do it'll be on YouTube live or TikTok or Instagram. Whatever, There's a way you can whatever do it allow, all whatever allows the best bandwidth and longest time, just in case we go over time. Yeah, yeah. but we'll announce when we're going to do it and lead up to it. Um, that way, it's not a surprise on everybody. Yeah, and, we, we want to uh, we want to try some, tune in. Yeah, we want to try some new things here, and that's going to be definitely one of them. Um, but yeah, just kind of reach out to us. Um, thank you so much for listening. We love doing it. We hope you love listening to it. I'm Chris. I'm Matt. And I'm Honto. And we'll see you next time.